state of our nation is an indication of the fact that the church of our day is sick. And if you have not come to that knowledge yet, you are sick too. You have a spiritual ailment. And according to the apostolic outlay in the book of uh, First Timothy, First Timothy, anytime the church is sick, it's because of what we are consuming. There are doctrinal diseases that is responsible for our infirmity as a people under God. Hallelujah. Is that one? Take it. The church of our day is sick. The emphasis that is in the body of Christ in our time is wrong. And it is the cause of the infirmity that we have today. The aberration that is our current corporate reality is as a result of our emphasis which is inconsistent to the emphasis of God. The goal of the rising prophetic and apostolic company is to bring perspective and accuracy so that we can function according to current spirit emphasis and we can be equipped with the knowledge that will make us survive the rise of deception that is hitting the body of Christ. That you need to understand. That's number two. Then number three, because somebody was offended because I called the name of a ministry yesterday. Number three, that aspect is my own personal calling. I just want to, for understanding's sake, all right? I am a customs officer in the spirit. I'm given authority by Jesus to label some commodities contraband. <laughs> so please understand. <laughs> please just understand my own unique, I'm a, a unique creature in God. Amen. And because of the person's impute, which is very great impute, I brought all my I went back to my archives to set up a systematic procedure for us to see what I wanted to emphasize. That what I said was as I was quickened by the Holy Ghost. And to prove that it is the Holy Ghost, I brought proof today. Hallelujah. Now, so, amen. amen. So I would like us to appreciate when my own unique ministry is working as a customs agent trying to check the commodities passing into the, into the body of Christ. That's how my own anointing works. So please, uh, the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. <laughs> you know, Reverend said when we are joining to the place, trivialities will begin to seek to, add, uh, 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 to catch our attention. When a whole prayer movement is built on trivialities, it's built on the way to the place. You will never come and you will, you will never appear. You build a temple on the road. Now, take me out of that statement. Just look at it. See. You remove me and then look at the statement very well. You build a prayer movement. It is true. In fact, the initiative to, to, to pioneer a prayer movement is accurate, is consistent with the program of God at this time in view of the rising priesthood in the Islamic world and that seeks to eat up our essence an accurate initiative. But the implementation of that initiative is by the way, not in the place. So that is not an altar. That is a, a factory for consumers. So 
So in my own lecture, I will mention the names of some ministries shaping the body of Christ right now. And I do that as a customs officer. So that I just want people to understand it's not that I'm a troublesome because ah, the person was say, Guy, why, why would you? Ah, all right, I have the authority from Jesus, amen. amen. So let's go back to Mount of Fire. <laughs> Meanwhile, well, we will need a board at some point. Uh, Pastor Dan, you have a very good handwriting. We will need you, your, your services. We, we have to go fully doctrinal before we come back to where I stopped yesterday. You know, the Holy Ghost does not operate outside of the logos. Hallelujah. Uh, you don't believe that. You believe your general overseer's word is superior to the logos. As we go on, you will find out that there are several times some utterances that your general overseer made that it was Satan's utterance. You will come to find out what happens that a man that prophesied and gave perspective to the ministry and the personality of Jesus just now. He was like a transistor radio. He had changed channel. And suddenly, in the same context, Jesus was rebuking him as if he was rebuking Satan. And he was rebuking Satan as if he was rebuking him. Why? What was the point? He, he yielded himself to a desire of the flesh. And he gave voice to the utterances of darkness. Now, I might have a desire. Please, customs officer. Just hold that in mind as we journey. Now listen, I might have a desire. What my desire is that we need money. That's my desire. All right? From whom? It's already in my heart. And then I come to church. I use scriptures. We need money. Okay? Meanwhile, if I had gone to the place, God may have been saying, wait. But I have a desire. I need money. Even for the work of the ministry, we need money for the work. All right? So I came to the pulpit and I began to raise money. Now, what I was doing was not was outside of God's prescription for that need. What I'm doing is the devil's work. Because I have yielded myself to a desire of what? Of the flesh. Secondly, the devil is aware that there ought to be a prayer movement in this country at this time. And because of that, he invaded us. Invaded the body of Christ. Customs officer. Please just hold that in mind. Customs. Some time ago, for instance, some people claim to have some encounters from God. Some encounters that came when God took them to hell, for instance. Went to hell. So they lay out of hell. They died. And then they came back with a warning. The body of Christ. And that affected the body of Christ so much and we were still trying to recover from that when our elections came. So we were wounded. There was no way we could carry the prayer burden of the elections effectively. The day we sat here and we said, okay, the Holy Spirit cannot operate outside of the Logos. Let us see the testimony of the Logos. The testimony of the Word of God. Okay? Please don't be offended at me. Then I raised the scripture. I said, Jesus, God said, 
these people have Moses and the prophets. Even if you send somebody from the dead, they will not listen. That is God speaking. God doesn't send messengers from the dead to minister to the living. I was just trying to probe the utterance as a customs officer. Are you with me? I went to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. There were three encounters that Paul had. The first encounter, he was taken to heaven. The second encounter, he was taken to paradise. Paradise is in the underworld. Paradise is a part of Hades. Hades has two colors. Hell and paradise. Hades is a place of waiting where spirits will wait for the judge to come and set things straight. It's a waiting place. Are you with me? So Paul was taken to heaven. And when he went to heaven, he saw a lot of things. God did not restrict Paul from discussing the things he saw in heaven. Paul was taken to the underworld it was in the underworld that Paul heard things and there was an instruction that these things are unlawful for men to utter. The message of, are you with me? Yes, so I said, no, I, uh, the people prophesied, but I'm just presenting what? The logos. After the presentation of the logos, then I now went into the linguistics. This is what this word in Greek is. This is what this word in Greek is. At the end of the day, the revelation lacked substance, sufficient substance in, in the customs court for it to be a commodity that is not contraband. And we put the message on cable. Do you know how many pastors in they insulted me for three months. You know what? That message was supposed to deliver them from the spirit of error. But they did not understand that it was a custom, a certified customs officer that was telling them which commodity is contraband. Now, I don't have any other work in the body of Christ apart from this custom work. And you will meet with smugglers. You are not with me. <laughs> Please, I'm just trying to make you, I'm not a bad man. Be good. My wife will tell you I'm, a, I'm the best man. <laughs> but I'm a customs officer. That's my problem. The pastors, you know why they were insulting me? Because the books they were selling won't sell again. So I had to go to Calabar where they had, it was a stronghold and to do my my custom teaching there. And one of our mommies here was already caught up in that, in, in the web. So we met in Lagos. We now said, oh yeah, let's go back to the Bible. 25 minutes of Bible study, we found out through custom papers. That the custom papers, that small good division. Well, have you been accosted by customs on the way that your, the cost, your custom papers are fake? I, I, you were almost cursing them, but it's their work. <laughs> they, are, <laughs> they are custom. Even though it's a terrible job, but somebody has to do that job. If I had a choice, I would not be in the custom. But I was recruited. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us take this custom thing further. I'm trying to define what the ministry of the church is first. And then what the prayer ministry of the church is within the ministry of the church. Then when I successfully do that, I will now show you some commodities that we have been, we custom people have been checking. It's the work of custom. It's not about somebody's custom work. All right. 
Uh, where's the board? Dan, you help me. I like your writing. You help me write a bit on the board. Because of this, I will digress so that we can open the Bible very well. By the time we finish opening it very well, you'll be able to see what you study your Bible and you don't see. And then you just sit back, we'll make some judgments. Is that, is that okay? Then we'll come back to where we stop. And God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, this, is, this was my statement. I said many devotional prayers and prayers of requests cannot be a substitute for, the, for prayer as a ministry or as a work. And this quote was drawn from the utterance of my book mentor, Watchman Nee. So it is not my quote. All right. Okay. Now let's do Bible study. This is big for the purpose of customs work. You know, these days, those days we didn't know what customs wanted. But these days at the airport they'll say, if you have battery, you cannot check it in. If you have an insecticide. The custom guys are they are trying now. So we want everybody to know. So this is you know what they call that thing in the airport? Scanner. scanner. That thing that they they write on scanner. Roll up banner. Yes, you will find what you should not travel with in the roll up banner. It's an initiative, a current initiative of the customer. Now, what we want to write here is a roll up. <laughs> I, I, my prayer is that you will not see me in this. You will just see custom work. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we have to digress to do Bible study. So you write this. Uh, let's analyze what we preach. Let's analyze the whole gospel in the whole Bible. First, after the analysis, then we'll begin to extract and put them in categories. Then we'll be able to see properly. It's only one part we will not analyze here. If we are all knowledgeable in the scripture, a man with a collar can't deceive you. That's what customs is fighting for. God has spoken a word over our territory, over our nation. And that word resides in the body of Christ. We are the foot soldiers that will bring those words. It's about us that those utterances spoke. All right? We must come back to our heritage in prophecy. A big movement can be a big error. And the only way we can test all things is to check the logos. If we don't, if we don't believe if we don't believe a prophecy, the only reason why we will not believe it is because the Bible cannot support that object. That's a basic check. Before we talk about uh, the inward, the subjective check, that one, we can't teach it. It's something that is operational and is under the uh, auspices of the sovereignty of the Holy Ghost. Okay? Now, we are trying to analyze the gospel, the good news. We want to analyze this good news. According to the Bible, the good news, which the gospel, which is the good news, exists on ten levels. According to the Bible, if you read through the New Testament, you will find out. Hallelujah. Some time ago, God instructed me to start studying the New Testament and to remain there until he says otherwise. This is where I dwell. I dwell in the New Testament. By instruction, I've been confined there. Now, these are the little, little patterns we found in Scripture. And I would like us to follow it 
gradually. The first good news we have in the Bible is what we call the gospel of salvation. The gospel of salvation is predicated upon a legal procedure that was intended to satisfy the claims of divine justice. The extent of corruption and the rebellion of the first man had done to the purpose of God was to be attended to. And there were several spiritual claims that must be fulfilled in order to undo legally that which had been set in motion. Hallelujah. And so hence we have the gospel of salvation. Please follow. Ah, you are writing too many things. They need to come to Bible school to learn that one. Clean. Don't, don't sell your Bible school. This is your Bible school too. I'm just giving them custom roll up. <laughs> not, not Bible school. <laughs> uh huh. Write like that. Leave that for Bible school. People that want to. All right. So, the gospel of salvation. According to the book of Romans, chapter 5, I guess, is twofold. Are you still with me? Oh my. Uh, the people outside, are you okay? I can't hear you. Are you okay? Oh, great. Not quite. Oh, the guys outside are not okay. Oh, what's the problem? No, sir. Hey. Okay. Uh, the media people, don't sit in the office and be smiling. There's no sound outside. In Romans chapter 5 verse 10, we see the two sides of the gospel of salvation. We have a legal side, then we have the organic side, the life side, the life dimension. Okay? Now, Romans 5.10. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. That's the legal side. Reconciled to God. Reconciliation was achieved when the legal requirement was satisfied. So we're reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more, this is another dimension. Being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. So salvation is twofold. The legal side that was accomplished by the death of Jesus and the organic side. Now the organic side or the life-giving side is expected to undo every havoc that our rebellion against God has caused. So we are healed, we are saved by participating in the life of God. Now, these two, these two realities have given, produced the possibility of forgiveness. Hallelujah. You, if you study your Bible critically, you discover that sin is what is responsible for sickness. And the same scriptures that promise us deliverance from sin promise us deliverance from sickness. In fact, sickness is a, in the body is a physical expression of sin in the soul. And so if you are dealing with sin, you are also ultimately dealing with sickness. Now, so it's the gospel of salvation that has provided forgiveness, healing, and deliverance. Are those things good? Is healing good? Amen. Deliverance is good. And they are all from God. Good. Um, all right. Let's move from salvation. Because I need you to understand that within the, in, in salvation, it is you that is blessed, not God. Is that true? You don't believe that? It is in the kingdom that God is blessed. So in all the facilities uh, that are attributed to our salvation is just to secure blessings for you. You have not yet done anything to please God. You have not yet done anything uh, 
to meet you you are not responsible yet but there's something for you to enjoy now so if our okay let's move from salvation come to victorious living the gospel of victorious living is predicated upon the fact that the holy spirit that tabernacles your spirit becomes your life force that's your life force that's what drives you if you look at the parking lot you will see so many vehicles you see lexus we see um toyota forerunner that's what you drove here but what i'm asking is what is driving you now so your life force is the holy spirit that tabernacles your spirit that's where you're supposed to draw from and the bible says that god's provision that he has made available to ensure that we transcend the limitations of humanity is the holy spirit now so there are several insufficiencies attributed to your humanity insufficiencies like the bible says that it is not given unto man to direct his steps you might think that because you schooled in harvard you have sufficient intelligence to determine the outcome of your future so you lay it out in five years time this is where i want to be in seven years time this is where i want to be in 10 years time this is where i want to be hallelujah you can't come up with that sequence by an act of mental exertion it is not given unto you to so determine hallelujah you are weak in determining those factors and so you have to lean on something that is deeper than you now the philosophy behind the victorious living is that we are living from the support system that the spirit of god provides are you with me now now if you understand victorious living very well god doesn't necessarily need to change your circumstances no what he does is that he he changes you he changes you by the supply of his spirit inside of you maybe you are having a financial situation you are having a challenge a marital situation there is there is there there are pressures on your home pressures on your family and all of that god will not set out solving those problems first that's not what he does first what he does first is that he supplies grace through his spirit that is in your inner man so that you can be strengthened such that in spite of the situation you are okay that's the gospel of victorious living we go above the level of humanity and we tap into the resource base of the spirit that god has made available to us in the holy ghost that's the christian life that's the christian life that's the basis of all victory i'm doing an overview so i, I don't want to press in hallelujah now so you find situations find circumstances that choke other people you find christians in the same circumstances what is different with us is not our circumstances we pass through the same circumstances when the state government refuses to pay salary everybody suffers it but some people are in debt and other people they are bubbling some are depressed and they are already cut off they are just living on air but some some others live on spirit and so the impact of the circumstances is not the same because we have a new resource base please help me tell your neighbor i don't care what car you drove into this place but what i'm concerned about is what is driving you that's the gospel of victorious living follow me is custom work this is custom work then we have the gospel of prosperity the root of the gospel of prosperity is factored into the covenant that god made with abraham in fact it's on the strength of that covenant that god says all the families of the earth will be blessed hallelujah any other prosperity you preach that doesn't have its roots in the architecture that of that covenant is the doctrine of the angel of com commerce and we have a lot of that masquerading today as prosperity 
Hallelujah. That's the covenant. It's from that point, from that covenant. He said, Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for is he that giveth thee power to what? Not make, get. Now, if you want to make apple, you know the process of there's fermentation in the process. It's, the process is serious. It's, it's easier to get it than to make it. <laughs> Making it is tedious. Hallelujah. Now, so it's on that covenant. Based on that covenant. And you will see the life of most the life of Abraham, the things that came out of his life on the strength of that covenant is the pathway to live, live in the blessed realm. Now, one of the things you will notice in that covenant is what we call exchange. First, I don't want to go into that, just an overview. Exchange. Uh, it's a principle of exchange that tight is based on. Tight. Right? I'm insufficient. My funds are insufficient. At least economics acknowledges that our resources are, are what? Scarce resources and our needs are unlimited. So we have a situation that is very, very inconsistent. So what we do is the exchange. God is the El Shaddai. God is the strong and the breasted one. God is the one that sustains all and is sustained by none. So he doesn't suffer our limited faith. So we come to him for contract, for covenant, so that we can exchange our insufficiency, exchange our weakness, and then we can now be assured of his all sufficiency. You understand that? So even though the funds, the finances, the harvest is not sufficient for us, we bring 10% to God. Meanwhile, 10% is Old Testament philosophy. But that's a good place to start. Bring 10% to God. And then what you are saying by that exchange is, we are, we are exchanging our insufficiency for your sufficiency. So the practice of covenant on the strength of that interaction that Abraham had with God, we see it in his life. We see those principles there. So when we study the life of Abraham and the resultant effect of the covenant he had with God, we will begin to understand the mechanism by which God intends that all the families of the earth will be blessed. Now, the, that reality called blessing, that reality, eh, God gave it to Abraham. And he is expecting that we tap into Abraham to get our own allocation from who? Ah, you are not with me. From who? Abraham. There is no other contract, there is no other deal that God has in place to bless your own family outside of that contract. I will. No other deal. You can pray and fast and say, Lord, create my own channel. It's, there's no such channel. The only channel that exists is the deal that God has made with Abraham. And we need to see how that Abraham began to live after that deal and the supernatural dimensions that came upon him that swallowed up his insufficiency, even to the insufficiency of lack of a child. So this covenant we're talking about, prosperity, in Old Testament use, actually doesn't mean money alone. It means all around. At the end of the day, this covenant that God had with Abraham brought him to a point that he was blessed in every way. As a man can be blessed. And that insufficiency was swallowed up. And what was manifesting was sufficiency. So we see that that covenant worked in his life. And the same covenant is supposed to work in everybody's life who has a connection to that spiritual transaction. Now, the first thing we see about that covenant is exchange, just like I said, exchange. So we come into practical covenant with God financially. It's all right. This, my phones are insufficient. Baba, take 10%. I'm giving you what is not sufficient so that you now, your all sufficiency can be manifested in my life. That's the place to start. But meanwhile, that's Old Testament perspective. In the New Testament, you are altogether God's property. Having been bought by the price of the blood of Jesus. 
and the perspective of the New Testament is, to, is consecration. Now, a, a human being will not naturally want to con consecrate instantly. It takes a process, and God is aware of our nature. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So you start with tithe. When you begin to, the idea is honor the Lord with your substance. Honor. It's because you have honor for God in your heart that you can obey that. Now, as that honor begins to increase, God can demand much more than that 10% regulation until he brings you to a point where you know that he has control over that which you are and that which you have. That's the posture in the New Testament. Are you understanding that? Now, so we are going to grow in that level of commitment as we exchange our insufficiency and we receive his sufficiency. And then very soon you come to realize that, that his sufficiency will envelope your entire being. Envelope. And meanwhile, when you really start giving, 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 releasing is an ability that comes by the Holy Spirit. For the Bible says that Jesus offered himself without spot unto God by the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. you, when you start tithing, it will be hard. And then a spirit now comes to assist you in the process. That is only by that spirit that you can offer yourself with that spot. So you exchange all your insufficiency and then you now begin to walk in the El Shaddai dimension. So that's what this is about. And the spirit that is responsible for keeping this covenant alive is called the Holy Spirit. And that's why the true definition of prosperity or blessing, we captured it in the book of Galatians chapter 3, when Paul gave perspective to the covenant of Abraham and brought it into context, brought it into, into you know, establish the foundation. For Christ has been made, uh, is it a cause of the law, as it is written? Cause is everyone that hangeth of the tree, that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit by faith. It's a promise in the Spirit of God that is the personality that is saddled with the responsibility of bringing the proceeds of that covenant to our life. So, if we are teaching prosperity today, we are teaching people how to obey spirit instructions. We are teaching people how to come to a point where the Holy Spirit can think through your thoughts. That's what we are talking about. Because what you are accessing is not earth-based prosperity. Your own comes by a power that makes you wealthy. Uh, so, 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 so we are, we, that's what we are teaching people. We are teaching people how to um, um, stand in alignment with God such that they have access to the windows of heaven. And the windows of heaven actually talks about the disclosures of God. That which humanity cannot look into. That God makes available by his spirit. But the Bible reveals that the eyes are the windows from whence we can peep into things. Now, if you go to Israel, you see ideas, windows that have been opened and people have implemented business, implemented, in fact, they implement government based on windows that were open. Prototypes from heaven. Okay, the place Pastor Gideon read to us, say, from that place, lift up thy eyes. That's the disclosure. And see. Now, if it were his physical eyes he was using to do the seeing, Tel Aviv won't be part of Israel. How many kilometers can you see with your physical eyes? The planes are not, they are undulating. Those were disclosures. The windows had to open for him to see that far. So we cannot talk about raising people to prosper. And we, we don't bring them to a point where they can see things, dis have disclosures. That's not the model we are preaching. But God will help us. That's not why we came here. It's just to show us the custom. The custom. Don't forget this custom. Now listen. Hey, are you still here? Yes, now the people outside, have they fixed your, your speaker? All right, so walk with me. Now, you see, in number one, number two, and number three here, which is the gospel of salvation, gospel of victorious living, gospel of prosperity. In these three aspects, 
it is you that is blessed. You have not done anything to God. And just in case you are here and you are a preacher, or maybe a member of a church, and what you people preach is salvation, victorious living, and the gospel of prosperity, you scored one, three over nine. That ministry is in error. It will, that ministry will cause more problems to the body of Christ than be a blessing to the body of Christ. Even if you have a university, you have a tennis court, and you, you have a, a, a swimming pool. Because what you are doing is that you are encouraging self-centeredness. That the gospel, everything that is happening is about me. And people have that perspective when they come into the kingdom. And they remain in the outer court. Those kind of people are not the people that will present themselves to fulfill the prayer ministry of the church. Meanwhile, we have not finished. You. We just, this is one of our three. Ah, peace is troubled. Sister Peace is just look. <laughs> Sister Peace, this is these are custom papers. <laughs> I'm very sorry, but the, see the church, we will see the match. I believe we will see the mature church of Nigeria. Our we will live long enough to see it. Yeah. And a lot of things will have to give way, unfortunately, in order for that mature man, that man child, to rise from Nigeria. And to take over the regions of Africa. To colonize Africa by Jesus and his kingdom. Hallelujah. Amen. Meanwhile, in the Garden of Eden, what Adam lost was not his purse. It wasn't his purse that fell off. <laughs> it wasn't his purse. So, so, so this cannot be the high point of God's emphasis. Now, somebody is quoting in scripture very, very strongly from the back there. He said, okay, then what does this scripture now mean when he says, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even of thy soul prosperity. If that is not in the pinnacle of, 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 of God's emphasis, you missed it again. You err not knowing the scriptures and the power, not the power of God. There is a structure of every epistle that is written. First of all, there's a salutation. After the salutation, then we now have the, 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 the core of the letter. Bringing the emphasis of the spirit at that time. The emphasis that is in third John is the truth. The truth is a personality. That was what he wanted to emphasize. That you guys are locked up with things. You should be concerned about the truth. And the scripture you quoted lies within the salutation. And what he was saying was that I wish that by the time this letter reaches you, that it will meet you in good condition. You'll be well, you'll be okay, your family will be all right. He was still giving them salutation. That's where you are drawing your prime revelation from. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. 